Hello and welcome to LA Currents. I'm Anita Bennett. Well, it's been a year since Lindsay Horvath was elected to the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. Horvath represents the third district. That area spans from the Ventura County line to West Hollywood and includes the San Fernando Valley and Santa Monica. It's a big area with two million people and many different needs. Here to discuss the third district and pressing issues for residents is Supervisor Lindsay Horvath. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. My pleasure. So let's get started. A lot of issues in this district. Mm -hmm. um, what are your priorities? We have to focus, obviously, on the homelessness crisis. It's why my very first motion was authoring our declaration of emergency in partnership with Mayor Bass and cities throughout the county who really need the help and support and who just can't wait for the bureaucratic red tape to deliver results. And to make sure that we're not only addressing what we're seeing in the homelessness crisis, but also preventing it from getting worse and helping to keep people in the housing they're already in. So um, there's a lot to do uh, on the homelessness crisis. It seems like progress is so slow. So what are the barriers to addressing this issue? So unfortunately, the services that um, are that exist to address the crisis are not aligned, or they haven't been. And so the mayor and I, uh, the city and the county respectively, are working very closely to make sure that the distance that's been between the city and county for far too long is closed and that we are working uh, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, making sure that we are delivering the results that people expect. Um, let's talk a little bit about transportation. You're on the Metro board. Yes. Um, what, how do we get more people on public transport? We have to make it safer and we have to uh, help people see the value in uh, taking Metro that they can get to the places that they need um, and that's why we're building out our regional infrastructure. Measure M is doing a lot to help us do that but we also have to make sure that we're telling the success stories of how we're improving the Metro experience. Uh, recently Metro launched a security ambassador program that was uh, started as a pilot program is now going to be a program that eventually will be brought in-house to Metro and uh, will stay longer term because we've seen it's helped to not only increase safety but increase accessibility for people who've never taken the metro before they now have people they can go to and ask them where they need to go how they navigate the system. Um, there's somebody there who understands the neighborhood as well, so they're welcoming them into the system. All of that is so critically important, especially if you've never used Metro here before. Um, so we need our law enforcement officials, we need uh, the transit security officers, but the ambassadors play a very critical role um, as well, and so I'm glad that they're part of our layered approach to um, having personnel throughout the system that help to keep people safe. I've been riding Metro myself uh, to make sure that the issues that people have been raising, um, I can see for myself and make sure that we're uh, uh, deploying the interventions that are needed throughout the system. So there's a, a lot of good progress that's happening and I think that's how we're gonna get people back into the system and also uh, help to expand it. Mm -hmm. Good news. Uh, let's talk about the Sheriff's Department. Okay. They frequently make headlines for the wrong reasons. Yes. Um, the county oversees the Sheriff's Department are reforms taking place? Can you just tell us a little bit about what's happening? So there are changes that have come to the department, not the least of which is having a new sheriff. And I'm, I'm glad to have Sheriff Luna as a new partner in addressing these issues. But unfortunately, we still see that there are concerns in the department as well, whether it's been the deaths in our jails, whether it's been reported uses of force. Um, we have a lot of work to do. And um, unfortunately, some of these changes are systemic and, and wouldn't be changed overnight just by replacing the sheriff. We have to entirely change the culture and uh, root out what is causing all of these issues, whether it's the deputy gangs, whether it's um, conflicts that exist around uh, stations and in communities. We have to make sure that law enforcement officials are embraced in a community and partner with a community as opposed to uh, some, of the, some of the conflicts that we've seen over the past year. Um, I'm excited to see that change. That's part of the reason I wanted to be a supervisor. I love that. Something else with the stigma attached is domestic violence. And when you were in the West Hollywood government, you were an advocate for getting people help. Is that, are yes. you going to continue that with the county? Absolutely. Um, uh, b before my work as, uh, as an elected official, I was an advocate um, and supporter of uh, organizations that are working to end domestic violence and gender-based violence. And so um, 
in the county, we know that there are services that exist, but again, because of how they get siloed in the various county departments, uh, they often aren't accessed in the ways um, that people need them, and uh, they can be incredibly difficult for people to figure out how to even get help in the first place. So that will be something, as I become chair next month, um, that will be something that I'm working on is how do we align these services, center the people who need the help, and bring those services to them rather than asking them to go to all of these different places to get the help that they need. Make sure that uh, the supports that we offer are actually meeting them where they are and delivering the help that they need. That's what we need to do and I want to bring that model to the county. Excellent. You said you're going to be the chair of the board? Yes. How that happened fast? I, <laughs> tell me about it. I know I'm. I'm excited. Um, I, in fact, I guess the rotation was supposed to be that I would have come in as chair. So I am incredibly grateful to uh, Supervisor Han, who has chaired our board this year, who stepped out of rotation, took that leadership role, and uh, has been phenomenal this entire year and a great example um, for me coming into the role. So now um, here I am. I will be the youngest chair ever in the history of the board um, and, and I think that um, it's an opportunity for us to bring more and different voices into the work of the county making sure that um, we are looking at the diversity of Los Angeles County and that it should be reflected in how we make our decisions so as the, as somebody who is bringing a bit of a different perspective as a renter as the first millennial um, you know somebody who sees uh, our county just a little bit differently it's a, an opportunity for us to bring in all different kinds of voices into the work You've prioritized LGBTQ rights. Yes. Um, is that something you want to continue? Absolutely. I, I think we've seen, unfortunately, a wave of hate uh, against our LGBTQ plus community, um, against our Jewish communities. There's so much hate that's out there right now. There's so much hate and divisiveness. And the county has uh, launched LA versus hate uh, as a collaborative approach to bringing people together, to tackling difficult conversations and creating space for people to have civil discourse on some of those really challenging issues and make sure that all of our communities are safe for everyone. So we're celebrating pride right here in LA, but we know throughout the country there's a pretty dark backdrop of hatred and bigotry and all kinds of anti-LGBT legislation. Can you imagine they're trying to outlaw this? To ban drag? What? What made you want to get into public service? Wow. Um, well, <laughs> you know, it wasn't something that I set out to do. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, but, you know, if I ran for government when I was in school and all that sort of thing. Um, Honestly, I didn't know that I was going to be an elected official. I very much enjoyed being an advocate and a community organizer, working on issues that I was passionate about and being able to be a voice for others. Um, so I'm just as comfortable going back to the street corner with a bullhorn as I am sitting uh, at the <laughs> desk that I'm at now. Um, but I think it's important to have people in those seats who are willing to work with the public and really listen. And that's what I seek to do. Um, I'm not somebody who comes in saying I have all of the answers. Um, in fact, I go out into the community to look for the answers in partnership with community. So if people want to get in contact with your office, how do they reach you? Uh, you can go to our website, which is lindsayhorvath.lacounty.gov. Um, you can also email us at thirddistrict at bos, like board of supervisors, .lacounty.gov. That's G-O-V. Um, so those are probably the best ways to reach, but you can call us, you can find us on social media, Lindsay P. Horvath. Um, we want to make sure that we're in contact with people um, as best as we can be. Uh, we do send out a newsletter, so if you go to our website, you'll be able to sign up for that as well to hear about the work that we're doing on the board and what's happening in the district. So there's a lot of good stuff happening and we're excited to engage with every part of the district. Well, this has definitely been a lively conversation. I learned a lot. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And that is going to do it for this edition of LA Currents. I'm Anita Bennett. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.